right, so, hello. I got talked into doing this yet again by Josh Mills, so thanks, Josh. Um, this is on behalf of, I believe his sponsors are Umqua and our um, backcountry hunter and anglers. And um, I, as you all know, design flies for Rio. So we are going to be doing some fun stuff just to show you some of the, or I am going to be tying some fun stuff that um, I really don't know what I'm tying tonight. I think that it's kind of fun to show you kind of how I go about it and how crappy it may end up. I have no idea, but it's kind of nice to show people that you don't always go in with an idea in your head. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it may not. So forgive me if it doesn't. So what I've done is I've got one of the new Eric's hooks. It's kind of like a worm hook, um, I think, but it's, they, I know they have another version called their Texas Predator hook. Um, this one I added some beads onto just to give it a little bit of weight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it so that these don't slide off. I'm gonna actually take some loon and I'm just gonna throw a little bit of it on there on either side. And this is, and then I'm gonna hit it with a light and that should keep it from slipping around that front one. And then I'm gonna do the same with the back one and lock them in place. And then that way there'll be a little bit of weight on there, but they'll also stick in there. Also, when I finish with this fly, if my idea pans out right, which who knows, um, shot in the dark if it does, but um, what's gonna happen then is that, and I don't glue my nail to it, then you'll be able to actually see through the bucktail and the rest of the material that I'm using to kind of see that orange hint kind of th show through, and hopefully it should get fish's attention even more. So these are not going anywhere now for at least a little while. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the crap that I got all over me. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I end up with crap all over me. I've had glue drip, dripped all over my jeans and had to walk around work all day with it. Um, it's not really a surprise or a shocker to anyone for that matter. So what I'm going to do is start by, you want to have something that's going to cover this gap here because you want to make sure that the materials that you're going to put on top isn't going to end up fouling and wrapping around that point right there. Okay. So the best thing you could really use is a little bit of bucktail. You don't want to use a lot because if you use a lot, it's just going to get waterlogged. <clears throat> so... I'm going to take a little bit, hand stack it, because I don't ever use a hair stacker. I think that it looks better without a hair stacker if it's just kind of hand stacked on your own. So I want it to go past the point so it still ends up protecting it and keeping stuff from actually wrapping around that hook point. Um, you could tie this in like a hollow fly so that it ends up even more flared. Um, it's kind of your call. Some people are going to do that. Some people aren't. Hollow fly style, I mean tying it forward and then pushing it back so it ends up like this. It's a good way to do it. It gives a lot more body to the fly in bulk. I'm not tonight because I'm lazy and I don't feel like it. Most of these flies that I tie for things like this, I don't really have a purpose in doing and some of the ones I post. So they end up in like flower pots around my house. Um, I take a picture of them outside or something and then they just throw them somewhere. And I know that like the animals aren't gonna get to them, but I have no idea what's gonna happen with that. So um, how many pieces of flare? Okay, here we go. And it started with, with Josh. He said he'd be heckling. I knew it would happen. I just didn't know when it would start. Um, I could do a lot of quotes from office space with the flare, but I'm gonna refrain from doing so because I know that my mother is watching and none of them are appropriate. <laughs> so, all right, now that I've done the bucktail on here, Ooh, Paula. Hi, Paula. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some flash. So we want to make it super flashy and we want to make it fun for the fish to want to go for. I've got this DNA. I love the way this looks. I'm pretty sure it's discontinued. If it's not, that'd be, that's awesome. It's a bonus, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, it's got a great amount of realistic flash to it and it's very, very limp. So it doesn't sit there and not move the way you want it to. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it tight in about with about a third of it out the front. Then what I'm going to do is fold that back, 
push it down so it kind of envelops all around everything. And I'm gonna wrap over that a couple wraps. This way it's gonna have two different lengths. It's not gonna matter when the fly is done, but it's actually gonna give it more bulk at the front of it, so. Um, my hat is actually, I'm, it's a fish pond hat. So I ended up with this hat and for some reason, this is a super comfortable foamy. There's not a ton of those out there that aren't like massive for chicks, I guess. So it'd be really nice to have some. Um, I was super excited when I found this one. All right, next up, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a darker color. I think I found this on my floor, <laughs> I have no idea. It's a DNA mix of something as well. So um, we're gonna do that and add some of this because right now we're just trying to bulk it up, right? So I'm going to add, do the same thing with this one. Um, and I'm going to tie it in so it's the same length as the other. Okay. Again, I'm going to push it back because it's not going to matter once I add in the rest. It's all going to look like it's about the same length. Um, if you're tying it home and doing some of this, do as I say, not as I do, and put a cork on the end of this so that you don't end up sticking the crap out of yourself. I made my finger turn black. Um, it turns out if you hit the nerve on your finger just right with a hook point really hard, it actually like makes it turn instantly black. It was the creepiest. I sent pictures of it to people and they were horrified. They thought it was something super inappropriate that I'd sent. So um, yeah, don't do it. Words of wisdom from me, deep thoughts here. Um, so next up, I'm gonna put some of this stuff. This is that frizz fiber, okay? And this stuff is amazing as long as you have something that's keeping it from getting fouled. So this stuff, if you're using this, you wanna make sure that you have it, it's not gonna wrap around that hook as much because it's going to, it would be annoying, okay? So I'm gonna put some of this on here. I'm getting closer to the eye now, as you can see. And on this one as well, I'm going to, since it's like a foot and a half long, it seems like, I'm gonna go ahead and fold that one back too. and have cut that so it's not as long. This stuff is so long, I don't know what people do with it. So, all right, now we have like the starting of a nice, awesome fish shape. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip it over because now we have to do something with the underside of it. I haven't decided what yet. <laughs> Didn't really plan ahead too much. But, hmm, oh, ostrich, why not? Ostrich looks good on everything, I think. It moves really nice. Um, if I had Rhea for stuff, I would, or Emu, that would be awesome too, but it's a lot harder to get. Unless you're in Canada, Canadians get everything fun, I've decided. Um, all right. This is a CNF bobbin. It's my favorite bobbin ever. I have like nine of them. They're fantastic until you lose the threader and then you'll be crying yourself to sleep trying to find a way to thread it again until you can get the new ones in the mail. So um, it's great, just make sure you buy lots of extras. And this is the one that, um, I don't know if it's his or not, but Gunnar Brammer has been using a lot on his as well. So um, as has Sven Diesel, I believe. So, all right, so we've got this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take it and tie it in. It's gonna end up going around all that. You wanna make sure that it's gonna lay back and kind of give it that body of a sh shape of a fish without necessarily being too short or too long. So when that's back, it should lay down and just kind of let those beads kind of peep through as needed. Okay, so these are so brittle, you don't need to probably do a lock on them by wrapping them backwards and then tying and cutting them off. I'm gonna do it just because people should technically do that, but in reality, they're gonna get chomped off by a fish before they're actually gonna have time to pull out. Um, all right. Um, suck the thread through, always works, I get it, but not on these bobbins. That's the problem with these bobbins. These bobbins have 
um, they have foam as an insert in them. So it holds the thread super tight, but you cannot suck. I don't care how good of a sucker you, <laughs> of a sucker you are. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say what I was going to say because I'm being on my best behavior, but um, yeah, you can't suck these through. I don't care how good you are. So don't try. It'll be embarrassing. So the next thing, we've got some lateral scale. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push this down a little bit so that maybe people can see even if there's comments in the way. There we go. So this stuff is lateral scale. It's great. It's great to put on on the sides at the end. Okay. And I'm going to take two pieces and what I'm going to do, you'll be able to see it here in a second. I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter because they're going to annoy me. Um, and I'm going to put it shocker where the lateral line would be. Put that on there and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold that second part back. Now I'm going to do the same to the other side and then you guys will get to see it once it's done. All right. So again, I'm going to take this and I cut it a little bit so it's not as long and obnoxious to so try and line them up a little bit. We'll see. Um, and I'm going to tie that in here. I'm going to take that and fold it back as well. Um, obviously, before you're done with the fly, you want to check and make sure those are the same length because they're not on each side. So that's I'll deal with that right now real quick and get it over with. Otherwise, I won't remember. Now I need something just on the end, on the top of it here to finish this guy off. Thinking. No, it's not long enough. We shall do, ooh. Herring back, crystal flash, why not? Do some of this. This is uh, always good because it gives it a little bit of bling. I like to fold it over my thread like this and then tie it down, tie it wrap backwards. By default, it automatically stays on there perfect. And let's go with peacock because we all need peacock on everything. Um, let's see here. If you want a realistic fish spine on any of your bait fish for saltwater, peacock is the answer. And really one of the only answers in my opinion. It's also the first thing that gets like chomped off, but eh, eh, still looks good for at least in the fly box. So I'm gonna add this. Ideally you would make it so that the natural curve of the peacock is perfect for what you're doing, but it doesn't always happen that way, I get it. Peacock is one that you're going to want to fold backwards over itself and tie it down so you don't end up, I hate it when it does that. It ends up lying down on the water, but it looks ridiculous until then. All right, stop complaining. This fly is now done except for the eyes. So now you get to see me put on eyes. which is also fun because then I get to actually make it so that the peacock is not necessarily, I don't know if you guys can see well, there we go. Okay. I always have these big eyes when I, I'd like to say that I know what I'm doing when I'm ordering every time, but sometimes I screw up and I end up ordering like size 10 or 15 millimeter on accident instead of like 10 millimeter or instead of like five millimeter. So this was one of those accidents and I end up with these big eyes. They're gonna work for this fly, I think. Yep, they're going to, and it's not gonna look ridiculous, so. Thoughts on jungle cock versus synthetic eyes. Um, jungle cock is awesome. It is fantastic for streamlined flies that you don't necessarily wanna be super obnoxious, like say a sand lance flatwing, that you want a really, really thin, lean body. It's not gonna be as good when you want a little bit of extra excitement to your fly. Um, and this is one of those flies. It's already obnoxious as hell. So why the hell not just put on some, <laughs> some regular obnoxious eyes on it. So there we go. Um, let's see here. So there's one eye.
Um, if anyone can hear the thundering going on upstairs, that's because they have a very um, competitive game of Jenga going on. <laughs> and it's, it's carrying down through the ceiling. Apparently we need more insulation in the ceiling here. I guess there's a lot worse things that could be happening. All right, so I'm using some Loon Thin, which is really thin and flow are the only two that you ever need. Thick is useless for most of life's decisions, I think, when it comes to fly tying. Um, just make sure that if you lose an eye, that you find it and make sure you don't walk around and go into the grocery store with it stuck to your boob like I did, because that starts some awkward conversations later on. Um, all right, so there's that one. Now I'm going to do the bottom. Make sure it gets nice and in there in between. And around. So it, this is just kind of seal it in place initially. And then it will make it so that you could go back over it with head cement and not end up having it get this like gooey mess while you're trying to dry it at home with head cement. So ideally, when this guy is in the water, you would end up with a fly that, I cut this a little bit just so it's got a little bit more of a good taper to it. Okay. So this would be for something, well, I mean, you could use it for lingcod out here, but otherwise it'd be more of a striper fly. I would throw this one for lingcod. I would throw this one, this is pretty small, but it would still probably work to some degree. Or tuna or dorado. You could throw it for stripers. I would throw it with a full sink line out in the salt or a sink tip. And you would want to, hopefully, this guy will end up sinking, belly sinking, so evenly. It should keel right. Um, and this should run, the water should push it over this, the beads. And those beads should end up providing enough weight to wobble it a little bit. And with the water pushing it over it, it should let those beads show even with the ostrich there. But that hint of color might do really well. I would think that a king or a silver up in the saltwater in Alaska would rail this thing really well too. Um, I say rail, that's probably inappropriate. I'm thinking more like hit, eat, something like that. Um, these are weighted beads. They are not tungsten because tungsten beads do not, they don't core them well enough in the, um, for the hole. So they don't actually go over big hooks like this very well, unless you go back through and do it again. And I don't have the desire nor the will to actually do that. So I don't, um, this guy, hopefully even with that hook, the way it is like that, it should keep it from wrapping around and fouling. Okay. Obviously when it's wet, that peacock curl will stay down at some point in the next few weeks, I will clean out my fish swim tank. And I'll throw this in there so that you guys can actually see how it works. It's not going to work at all. All right. Pike. Yes. Pike would totally rock that too. So the next one I'm going to do is one of my favorites. And anyone who knows me knows that I love, 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 love worms. Um, because every fish in the entire world will eat a pink worm in my book. So this is a polychaete worm. And because not everyone has the means nor the desire to do flat wings, I am actually going to do just stuff, use basic materials that you could find anywhere to do it. And I'm gonna show you a couple alternatives too, in case you don't even have those. So, here we go. I'm gonna use white thread for this one. This is on a longer shank uh, Airx hook. Um, ideally, I would do it on a stainless. This one's plated. It's just what was in front of me. And again, I'm shooting and grabbing whatever I've got tonight. So this is what we're doing tonight. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I also have some of the Stealth Chaconis, um, uh like bee chain eyes. These are the white ones. They do them in tan. Tan would be awesome, but I like white because I can mark them and color them however I want. So I'm gonna do that. Wrap the front there before I put on my chain eyes. You guys see my garbage can? It's the best ever, by the way. I like um, packing tape because it comes off a little bit easier <laughs> when I tape it to my desk. Every once in a while though, it comes off and then my butt gets stuck to my chair and the bag and then it just ends up more awkward, so. 
I know I should cut myself off from admitting some of these things, but I don't really care. Um, all right, so you wanna make sure that you get underneath wrapping too so that they lock them better in place. But when all else fails, glue the crap out of them. It's the best way to get these on there. Um, all right, so those guys are in there. Now the secret ingredient. Doesn't have to be Sally Hansen's, but for some reason the smell of this makes me happier as I'm tying, so I just keep doing it. <laughs> I'm sure there's other kinds out there, but Sally Hansen is like my favorite person ever for inventing that. All right. I'm sure there's like some sort of issue that happens from huffing that stuff too much while you're tying. That may be why I've been, I'm married and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> God knows what else I've done while I've been high on some head cement after tying, unknowingly. Um, so back to normal. I am going to go ahead and start with adding in craffer. I would do cream or white or this color. The alternative you could use would be some kind of rabbit strip. I like these groovy ones. These are hairline groovy strips. I like the barred version. This is the peach, gold, and white. They also do yellow, like orange or something in white. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use Crafter just because it's on hand and it's easy, but you guys can use either. The other option is, again, you could go ahead and use more ostrich if you wanted for the tail on this. This fly would seriously work anywhere. And if you're anywhere where there's a full moon in salt water included, this would be one I would put out there. Um, it's. I don't know for sure if these are heavy enough to necessarily flip this hook, it should, but you, if you wanna make sure that it flips it every time, then I would go with some um, some of the lead eyes, the lead dumbbells, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this off. And I'm gonna pull out some of that under fur. the stuff that ends up all over you. Um, and I'm gonna do, pull out some of the long, long fuzzy pieces. I have a feeling that this is one of those ones that I'm gonna be really entertained reading the comments afterwards <laughs> based on the few bits and pieces I've seen as I'm going. All right, so I'm not anal about this really anything for that matter. And I like to do it one and a half to two times the length of the hook shank. Okay, so I'm gonna tie that in. Now one trick you could do if you really wanted to is you could tie in a piece of hard mono, like the um, Rio Saltwater Hard Mono is one of the ones that I end up using a lot of times in like 20 pound or 30 pound. And you can tie that in before you tie in your craft fur and you can actually wrap it around. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep this from fouling. So if I do a little bit of wrapping around, like I'm doing a pair post, that's gonna make it keep from wrapping around the hook shank as much. Kicks it up and makes it all pretty too. See? Okay. So once that's done there, now I'm gonna take my favorite material ever. It'd be a lot easier if you could get it easily in the U.S. And that is this stuff. This stuff is awesome. It's so much fun for not any of what they made it for. <laughs> so this one here is the, um, it's the slush jelly in prawn. And you can actually take this and we're going to make the body with this. Now, you have a couple options if you want. You can add like a couple pieces of flash to this. But if the fish that you're targeting are super picky, I would not add flash to it, okay? I'm gonna add a couple pieces of the UV tan crystal flash, just for grins. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna wrap it over, fold it in half over my thread and then tie my thread down like that so that I don't have to lock it at all. It's not going anywhere. And then I'm gonna tie in this. 
think there's something else that it needs beforehand. Let's see here. It needs a little extra fun. If, um, if you guys could see my desk right now, you would laugh. It's, I strategically clean the area right here by going like that before I start every time. <laughs> the rest of it is a disaster, like straight up disaster. Um, hmm, what should I add to it? Ah, here we go. We'll give it a little bit more texture by doing some of this Grizzly Soft Tackle. If there happened to be a flying bird that flew past that happened to have some barred stomach feathers that you were to happen to accidentally see fall from the sky and grab those feathers, um, preferably a bird of prey, it um, would make really, really good addition to this, just so you all know, hypothetically. I'm gonna take this feather and I'm gonna break that tip off of it because it's, sorry, hold on. All right, there we go. Do I ever use Lemmy fur? <laughs> um, I haven't yet. It's like, I probably could. It would probably work for ram's wool kind of thing, but you never know. So I'm gonna take this and just tie that in right there, the lazy way, just to give it a little bit of depth with the black and white. And wrap the crap out of it on top of it. There we go. See, that's beautiful now. And now, ooh, um, if you had a cousin that worked at a bird sanctuary, that is a cousin not to anger in any way because that would be awesome. All right, so what I've done with this, here's the secret with this stuff and any chenille for that matter. You take it, go against the grain and pull. And it leaves that nice little pretty core right there that you can actually tie in. And then you don't have the super fat butt where you tied the thing. Well, not it's not always the butt, I guess. But I mean, most butts are fat. <laughs> are fat? I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is, it makes it really easy to tie in and give yourself, once you start wrapping forward, it gives it a super nice, perfect shape. And it doesn't have a super fat back end and then go skinny towards the front, right? Okay. We want it to be a proportionate fly. All right. So I'm gonna wrap that down and around. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, <laughs> is there a mix a lot? Yes, for sure. All right. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm kind of, I guess you could say I'm palmering it or like mis I'm, I don't know, massaging, molesting, manip manipulating would be a better term. I am manipulating this so that it goes back the way I want it to, okay? So it's nice and fluffy. This stuff has a little bit of like a translucent like material in it too blended and it looks awesome. All right, so we're gonna do that. Keep going all the way to the head. Okay, so once we get to the eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie this off because the fish don't really give a crap if it's got a hairy face or not. And as my husband will tell you, I don't like hairy faces that much. They're not that fun. Okay, I like them on other people, just not, just not him. <laughs> so here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna whip finish this. And then I get to have the fun part, and that's the Chia Pet stuff, where I'm going through and I get to shape it however I want. Okay. So now I have this cute little fluffy guy. And I'm going to take this thing, my prison shank, and I'm going to go through and pick out all of this so that it's perfectly... None of it's caught under the wraps of the other one in front of it. And then I get to go through and trim it. And that's the most fun part for me. I usually end up with nothing left. 
I seriously almost bought myself one of the Yoda, the baby Yoda Chia pets for Christmas for myself because I just wanted to be able to have a baby Yoda Chia pet. I thought it'd be super fun, but I didn't buy it for myself. So I was disappointed with myself. Um, so next up, see how it looks like that. I want to have it flat on the top and on the bottom, kind of like a poly keat would. So here we go. I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut. And I'm going to cut again. And I'm going to keep cutting until I'm probably cut too much off. And then I'm going to regret it. And then I'm going to say, oh, that's fine though. Because it's just a fly and the fish really don't care. Just make sure you don't cut the back stuff. Because then it kind of sucks. See? Now, look how beautiful that turns out. It's got a little bit on the bottom. Hold on, I got to deal with that. It's going to bug me. So, see how that guy has a nice little, like, flared shape to him, okay? So now what I'm going to do, I mean, in hindsight, I should have done this on, like, a SL12S short shank. And this probably, I'm sure Tarvin would eat this, too, but that's all right. Now we got to add the fun parts to it because, you know, the fish won't eat anything unless it's got a striped tail, in my opinion. So we're going to do that for fun. I don't know if people can see this well still with the comments, so we're going to hope they can. So what I'm going to do is I've got the Copic markers. These ones are awesome because they're the only thing that actually turns up fluorescent even on fly tying materials, even after it's been wet and you've done everything else with it. Um, and I like, I find reasons to use basically all the colors. Um, if it weren't for Rio, I would not have them because they're they're not super cheap, but they make flies look so amazing that I am very lucky to have them. And you could probably find some on like eBay because a lot of times people will sell them that have them for like art classes and stuff at a lot cheaper. And these things will last forever, but they do, even the pink is super fluorescent and it shows up with UV light really well. It's pretty nice. So I'm gonna do some light pink stripes. We have our Polly Keats out in Puget Sound that cutthroat go nuts for, especially after a full moon. And they will eat them year round. I'm gonna do a little bit of brown right in front of the other one because it just makes it look even prettier. If you don't have some kind of pens to use, you should get some because I'll tell you that even the crummiest flies in the world, and I know that because I tie crummy flies sometimes, trust me, um, it can look way better with a little bit of pen work. So if you get a pen in some colors that you might use or colors that are hard to achieve with, um, with just materials, like some of the, like, uh, shrimp colors and stuff, you can really just go to town and doctor up whatever fly you want. Um, so how do you sharpen, do you sharpen your scissors now? I could. It's a lot of effort. I don't. I just buy new ones. Um, and I also saw the UV light. I'm using the Loon Infinity Light. This, these things are the best. I spent years, I say this every time, but I spent years trying to find the right light. Turns out it wasn't, or not the right light, but the right UV material that didn't leave like goo residue everywhere. Turns out it's not the material at all. It's for sure a hundred percent just the fact that my light sucked, even though I had every version ever made. And the second I got the infinity light that just blasts it with light, it weirdly no longer had any tack to it, no matter what one I use. So weird how that works. All right, so this guy is now done. The scissors I'm using right now are also the loon scissors. I have these guys. I have, I have a lot of different kinds of scissors. I have the Dr. Slick scissors. There's a really expensive pair I have somewhere, which isn't helping me at all since I can't find them. But I do like them a lot as well. Um, not picky as long as they cut things. Um, the ideal thing that you would do that Patrick, who I work with, um, that he does, which is awesome is he marks them. So he knows which ones, once they're his crappy scissors, he marks them so that he doesn't reuse them to say like cut, take his new scissors and cut wire with them or something. So then they turn into wire cutter scissors. You could also get these for wire cutters. These things work great. They're like five bucks on Amazon. So now that I'm done yapping here, that is that little wormy guy. 
And I guarantee you this thing would also work for maybe Snook too, but definitely baby tarpon, um, seabrine cutthroat, salmon, anything out there that eats a pink worm would pretty much annihilate this thing. So I would just put it on a bigger hook or a different hook if it was for bigger fish. Um, I just realized what time it is, so I'm gonna just make something up now. Just the last one for fun. Let's put together something. Ha ha, I got it, okay. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna find some beads and put them on this little salt water hook I've got. And I'm going to, let's do, I've got some glass high, silver highlight glass beads here. And I'm gonna put some of these guys actually on my hook and they're gonna add some more weight as well. I have enough, we'll see how that works out. All right, so see if that guy fits. Nope. There's one. So this is similar to a fly that I did for Rio that is one of my go-to flies for Puget Sound. Um, this one, the Rio one is called the Rio's Nice Glass. Another one of my fun names. We've got some really awesome names this year. I got to use a lot of my names that were on my favorite names list that I've been wanting to use for a really long time. Um, most of them are appropriate to the, some degree. Um, if you haven't had a chance, the suppository is one of my favorites. It's, um, it's pretty fun. It's got a rattle in its butt that you can actually remove and switch out if you want with a, a different size rattle. Um, it might take a little bit of lube if you want a bigger rattle to go in there, but otherwise it's great. It's good for redfish and other things, but that's one of my favorite ones. Um, I got a chuckle out of virtually everybody at IFTD that I showed and told them the name was the suppository too. So, um, what else? There is the I'd Hit That, which is another good one. Um, just because it was fun to have like my kids running around being like, I'd hit that, I'd hit that. Can I have an I'd Hit That? <laughs> it just makes me laugh because I'm such a nerd. Um, I always think of it and think, okay, what would be the most embarrassing thing to have to go into a fly shop and ask for? And those are the names I end up with. So it works out perfect. All right, so this one, we also, again, remember the rule when it's saltwater stuff is you wanna use bucktail or something that's gonna keep it from fouling or wrapping around the hook shank, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use bucktail here on this guy, just for the tail end here. Um, and I'm gonna cut that bucktail short there. It's gonna get glued in anyway, so I don't really care about locking it in place. Okay, so there's that. It's got a nice little tail now. Now I get to add whatever I want to make it look pretty because the majority of the work on this fly is actually coating it after the fact. So, all right. We want something kind of clear, so I'm gonna say this is good. This is like a trans, Jesus looping everything, hooking on this stuff, whatever. Um, this is called, this is finesse fiber in tan from Hairline. It's kind of, transparent, but it has a little bit of a hue of tan to it. This will never end up back in that container. <laughs> no. Sorry, Patrick. Um, all right. So here we go. Taking some of this and you want less because it's going to be folded forward. Okay. Um, there we go. So I'm gonna tie some of this in, tie it down, then fold it over, wrap down again. Then we're gonna find something else. See that glue, that's, or the tape again, it's the, another victim of the tape. At least it wasn't my butt this time. All right, um, we could do, 
Next up. <laughs> yeah, let's do small. Um, this is my uh, fun flashaboo thing. Um, it's, um, I don't know. It's a lot. It could be worse. It's pretty organized, actually, weirdly, right now. Um, I like to think that um, my mind works better when it isn't organized. I think it does to a degree. Some days are better than others. Just don't tell my boss that. Um, what do we do? What color next? Somebody, first person who tells me, which one next? Should I do an olive? Chartreusey? Yeah. There's a delay, so I shouldn't have even asked. I'm gonna go with, let's go with an olive color. Good job, Paula, thank you. Let's see, I knew somebody would come in for the win on that one. So we're gonna do green. Again, I used too much, so I'm gonna throw something away. Didn't all throw away, really. Um, do that. And I'm gonna fold it back over itself again. Make sure that none of them wrapped around the side like some of them tried to do, because you want it to be a dark line on the top, okay? And, Okay, there you go. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna add in a little bit of this Peacock Ripple Ice Fiber. It looks so rad when it's wet as a spine for fish um, or bait fish, but it kind of sucks a little bit until then because um, it, it ends up like chewed off right away. So I don't know how many fish it really lasts through, but it looks awesome to get those first fish to like eat it. So there's that, all right. So I'm gonna tie that down. Again, I'm gonna fold this back too. The beauty of this is you get clear beads and it really doesn't matter what color you wanna do your fly because when it comes down to it, the, um, you could color if you have pens, you can make any fish or any bait fish color you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish that and do a crappy job of that because it really doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna tie a little bit in the front. Only reason I'm doing this is to push those beads back and give it more of a taper so it doesn't go straight to a really fat head because that really annoys me. Nobody wants a fat head. Like 50 chins on a fly here. All right, so there we go. All right, so now it's a pretty, it looks pretty stupid and kind of boring still. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. There we go, okay? So it's got the beads, and then it's got this like choppy blocky part right there, and then it's got this awesome back. So here's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna find some eyes. I'm gonna put some eyes on them, okay? And then I'm gonna glue the crap out of it with some UV stuff and form a body that's going to end up being clear. This is where I get to use my favorite tool if I could find it. Yes. The cauterizer. Everyone knows how much I love this tool because you can light yourself on fire, give yourself prison tattoos, whatever you feel like doing with it. Or you could just um, trim off little bits of thread that are on your fly still. So, all right. So I'm going to put the eye so it's right over the first beat. And that makes it so that it is nice and still gives it that tapered head that goes from the nose bigger, okay? And yes, Paula, that is one that you probably used in Cuba because uh, Simon brought some of these with him. It's, this fly works just about everywhere um, that I have used it that has fish in the salt water. It started out as an Albi fly that it was a favor to somebody when I worked at Avid Angler and it just kind of morphed a little bit from there. Um, and the beads then were added to it and it just, 
I had never seen beads be used to create the body so that it made it so it was like see-through um, and it or done before so it made it just kind of unique and I like it. The thing that with the beads that I experienced in Florida fishing with Lacey who's super fun if you haven't done that she's blast as gray um, at Florida Outdoor Experience is that if you aren't paying attention and you're fishing with Heather Hodson and she's making you laugh a lot and your casting goes to hell and you end up hooking into like a mangrove and you rip it really, really fast and hard to get the fly back off because you also aren't paying attention, that you can actually break the shank on these in half. <laughs> um, and what's weird is it breaks, the shank itself doesn't break, but the, um, the glue will actually separate, but the fly still fish the rest of the day. So it really didn't matter. Um, I didn't realize that that was something that could happen, but um, I managed to find a way to do it. And then I realized that it still fished, so I thought, mm, I'm not going to change anything. So it's a good little um, R&D kind of experience there. If it still functions, I'm cool with it, because not many people are going to be as stupid as me and do that. Um, all right, so now I've got this head almost completely formed. If you want to make it look really, really cool and transparent, Parent, which is what the actual Rio one is, is the, I used a, um, a mono thread. So it's like seriously see-through. It's really cool. This one I'm using white just so people can see what I'm doing. So, um, all right. So now that's almost done. What kind of UV light is that? This one is the Loon, the infinity light. It costs more than most lights, actually any of them, but I'll tell you it's worth its weight in gold and you'll never buy another light again. So it's totally worth it. And then you can get the really cheap bulk crappy standard USB um, cords from Amazon, three of them for like five bucks that are like 10 feet long. Just make sure you trip over them all the time, um, but they work great. So now we're gonna find the green. Um, I am gonna post this one up again. This one is the just similar to the Rio's nice glass that I did, but I'll post it up and show people. Um, let's do my favorite part, which is coloring. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a light olive for the back or for the first color combo. And then I'll do a darker olive. Not that you can see these that well, it's just, it's still kind of fun. Um, and then last, I need to find the gray in my super, super clean desk area that you guys can't see, which may or may not be available. So instead, hey, I've decided I'm going to use this instead because it would be fun. Let's go with a copper back. This one smells way better. So if you like sniffing things, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's another one that Hairline sells. It's a copper medium point pen of some sort that's permanent, super fun. It still, it still smells good, I have to admit. So anyways, and it matches the peacock color of the ripple ice fiber on top, so that's good too. So I'm gonna add that. And it's perfect. All right, so this guy, if you can see, I'll do it, I'll post another picture of it that's better, but you can see that copper showing up on, as a spine that kind of matches the ripple ice fiber, okay? And then you can see those, the beads that you can see through. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. That's, that's all I got off this one. Uh, my my words are gone now <laughs> so three hour, or an hour of just describing flies i'm toast um but yeah i'll go ahead and i'll post these tomorrow and i'll also add in this video for people to re-watch if they want under the videos and on youtube so that you can go back and watch these if you want and other than that thanks again for everyone watching and thanks josh for inviting me yet again or persuading me to so this was a super fun one so i appreciate everyone watching thanks so much